Moving on with logarithm functions, in the last video we learned about why we needed logs, and they are the inverse of exponential functions. And we learned that the easiest way to evaluate them is basically to do what the definition is set up as, is to convert it from log format into exponential format. We did some examples of rewriting them back and forth, and then we also did some simple examples of evaluating them. Now we want to talk about some very specialized logs. And we actually have two specialized logs. The first one is called the common logarithmic function, and that is just log of x. So, so far, all of the ones that we've seen have log base v of x. And so this one, notice there's no base here. If it leaves off the base, then we are to assume that this is a common logarithmic function and that our base is equal to 10. Now, I keep reminding you to treat logs as a exponential question, so say. So if I wanted to evaluate a common log function, the question that I will always be asking is 10 to what power is equal to our argument? Another log function that we will see quite often is the natural logarithmic function. And it actually looks different. It looks like this ln of x. And this is the natural log function. That's what the l and the n stand for. It is base e. So remember in the exponent function, we defined what e was and we said why it was important. It was important because as we looked at a certain function, our limit approach this value. So if we have a very specified function, then we also need a very specified inverse. And so the inverse of e to the x is defined as ln of x, or the natural log of x. And again, it is always assumed to be base e. Okay, so let's do some evaluation of these common and these natural logarithms. I've showed you in the last video how to evaluate these by converting them into exponential notation. So that's what I suggest that you pause the video and do here, and then come back and check your answers. Okay, so in example one, I have log base 10 of 100,000. So my question, my exponential question that I'm asking is 10 to what power is equal to 100,000? The easiest way to answer this is how many zeros do I have? Notice I have five zeros here. Well, that means it's going to be 10 to the fifth power. And so my answer here is five. Log of 100,000 is equivalent to five. Two is very similar. 10 to what power is equal to 0 0.001. And so I know it's going to be reciprocal because that's going to give me the fraction. So one over what gives me this 0 0.001, and it is one thousandth because we're in the thousandth place, 10 hundred thousand. So 10 to what power gives us one over this? I know my answer is going to be negative because I'm in the denominator. I see three zeros. So 10 to the negative 3 power, 1 over 1,000, or this point zero zero one. So my answer here, log of point zero zero one is equal to negative 3. Problem 3 and 4 might seem like they're a little bit trickier because we have base e rather than base 10, but it's going to be treated the exact same way. So in number 3, if I have base e, the exponential equation that I'm asking is e to what power is equal to my argument, where my argument is equal to 4. Well, this is really easy. I can see that everything's set up nice and neat. So this tells us directly that y is going to be equal to 4. And so this tells us directly that the answer of this is equal to 4. The natural log of e to the fourth is just 4. Um, the next one e to what power is equal to 1 over e. So e to what power is equal to 1 over e. Well, this is basically saying all I need to do is take the reciprocal of e, and I know I can do that by assigning a negative exponent. So my answer here is negative 1. So the natural log of 1 over e is 
negative 1. Okay, so this is just to get you familiar with the common logs, which are base 10, and the natural logs, which are base E. Now, I'm going to evaluate some more log functions, but we're going to see something unique happen with each one of these. And so that's why I call this one the special cases one. I believe that we've done enough examples of these that you can work them on your own. Just treat them as an exponential question. The base to what power is equal to our argument? And you should see something unique happening in each one of these. Okay, in number one, I have three to what power is equal to three to the tenth. Well, my threes match up, so that means the power has got to be 10. And so my answer here is 10. So the special case that I'm hoping to get you to notice here is that if our base and then the base here match, what we're going to end up with is just our exponent. So if we have a power in our argument, and the base of that power matches the base of the logs. They basically cancel out, and we just end up with the power there. So that's the special case happening in number one. In number two, I have square root of seven to what power is equal to one? Well, it might look like it's difficult because I have this crazy number here, the square root of seven, but there's only going to be one answer where it's going to come up to be one. And so, the answer's got to be zero. The only time we get an answer of one to come out when our base isn't one is when our exponent is zero. So the special case that we're hoping that you see here is any time we have an argument of one, it's guaranteed that our answer is going to be zero. Number three actually mimics number one just a little bit, but let's go ahead and work through it using our exponential question. 11 to what power is equal to 11? Well, we know the, and the answer here has got to be 1. So, like I said, if our bases match, then we end up with this exponent. Well, notice here our bases match, and so we really do end up with that exponent. The exponent's just not written because it is a 1. So number three is basically using the same property as number one, except for our exponent wasn't visible in the first place. Okay, let's see what's happening with number four then. So we know that natural logs have base e. So e to the what power is equal to e squared? Well, this is the same property as one and three. If our bases of these guys match, then the answer is going to be our exponent. So our answer here is 2. Number 5 is probably the most difficult one, so I'm going to skip it for a moment. Let's move on to number 6. Number 6 mimics what happened in number 2. Any time I have 1 in my argument, that guarantees that my answer is going to be 0. So my exponential question here, since I'm base e, is e to the 0 power is equal to 1. We know that the only way I can get a 1 in my argument is if my exponent is 0. In example 5, which is the most difficult one, in these examples here, we've actually been changing these from log form into exponential form. In example 5, we're actually going to change it from exponential form into log form to see what's happening. So let me write down my definition again log base b of x is equal to y. That is the exact same statement as b to the y is equal to x. Okay, so here this is in exponential format. My base is 5. My power is this whole mess here. And then if I needed to, I can set it equal to something. So let's just pick any generic variable. How about Q? Q sounds good. So I'm going to replace Q with my X place. So now what we need to do is we need to convert this into log form. So it's in exponential form because I have 5 as an exponent. So this is going to be log base 5 of my argument, which I've said is Q, is equal to log 
base 5 of c squared plus 4. So comparing this in my log format, I have my base, I have my argument, and I have my equivalent statement. Okay, so now let's try and figure out what q is actually equal to, because we want to solve this here. Well, notice in both of these expressions it's log base 5. So that means that q has got to be equal to what we're taking the log of. And so in this case, q is equal to c squared plus 4. Now, that's probably a lot of work to figure out on your own, but here's the deal. This is one of the special cases. So the thing to note is, is that if your bases match, so if this bases match and this base match, they basically cancel out because we can convert it into that log format. And so that means Q is going to equal to whatever is inside our log function. And so that's why this one is a special case. So my answer here, we already said was C squared plus Okay, we've worked through these examples here, and in the next video, we're going to actually define the properties that we just worked through. We're just going to put them in generic form so we can see that they work for any values that fit this mold.